Hey everyone, well, wearable AI tech has arrived. What exactly does that mean and what does it do? Well, we're gonna take a look at one of the first entries into this new playground with Humane's AI pin. Plus, I've got some good gossipy drama in the AI wars, a new platform where you can prompt for a video game, and a new image generator that has consistent characters. Okay, lots to cover, let's dive in. First up, we have Humane's pin, a wearable AI that kind of feels like we have our Star Trek communicator badge. The device aims to integrate AI into the fabric of our lives, possibly eliminating the need for cell phones. Now, if you're skeptical about that, as am I, we can dig in a little deeper. So the pin collects data from an onboard camera, microphone, and motion detector, and it's powered by a Snapdragon processor. This is a completely independent device. It does not tether to your phone. It's controlled by voice, hand gestures, and communicates back to you via spatial audio or via Bluetooth headphones. But what does it actually do? Well, the overall idea is that it does replace your phone, offering you a new way to interact with technology. There is no screen, although it does have kind of a cool display feature. We'll be taking a look at that in just a minute. Use cases include making and taking phone calls, sending and receiving messages, summarizing emails, updating calendars, uh, you know, basically Siri functions. There is a wearable camera on the front of the device with an ultra wide angle lens, uh, can be used for both stills and video. I'm not sure what the specs on the camera are, but the demo images look pretty decent. There's some interesting food tracking that you can do with it by snapping a photo of what you're eating and then having your pin count the calories that you're eating for the day. They also demoed a universal translator, which to be honest, I'm always kind of a sucker for, and a few other features that are all basically things that your phone does. One cool thing is that it does have a visual element with a laser ink display that appears in the palm of your hand. I I am curious to see how that works on a sunny day though. Overall, I do think that the pin is interesting and I am a fan of wearable tech. However, there are some downsides. First and obviously is the cost. It is $699 for the unit, followed by $24 a month for the service. And that's kind of an ask. The system runs on a Humane branded wireless network that is powered by T-Mobile. So you will need to use a separate phone number from the one that you currently have. And at launch, the functionality and apps are somewhat limited. Although Humane has stated as the device and platform evolves with future updates, so do the possibilities it unlocks. It is clear that the next wave of cutting edge technology is going to be in the spatial or ambient computing arena. Basically things that are meant to untether us from our phones. Overall, kudos to Humane for taking a step into the future. Let me know in the comments below what you think of the pin. Moving on, some interesting high school level drama coming out of Microsoft and OpenAI with Sam Altman responding on his Twitter to a CNBC story that broke about ChatGPT being blocked from Microsoft employees due to safety concerns. Due to security and data concerns, a number of AI tools are no longer available for employees to use. While it is true that Microsoft has invested in OpenAI and that ChatGPT has built in safeguards to prevent improper use, the website is nevertheless a third-party external service. That means you must exercise caution using it due to risks of privacy and security. Sam responded on Twitter by joking, the rumors that we are blocking Microsoft 365 in retaliation are completely unfounded. Microsoft did reinstate ChatGPT fairly quickly and cited the incident as an accident, but many were quick to point out the fairly odd interaction at OpenAI's dev day between Altman and Microsoft CEO Satya Nadella, where Altman clearly threw him off with an unscripted question. Um, two questions, won't take too much of your time. How, are, how is Microsoft thinking about the partnership currently? Uh, first, <laughs> we love you guys. <laughs> That feels weird, right? And look, I know that I'm not the only person to have taken note of the fact that the only machines at Dev Day were Apple MacBooks. Tangentially related with signs of the honeymoon phase in Wayne, Jeff Bezos and Amazon are gearing up like a cougar who stumbled into a bachelor party with Olympus. Olympus is their new AI model, which is set to rival ChatGPT and Bard. It's been reported that Olympus has two trillion parameters compared to OpenAI's one trillion. Although experts have weighed in, stating that larger parameters do not necessarily equate better performance. And yes, there is a very obvious joke, but you know what? I'm not gonna make it. I am better than that. Olympus may be released as early as December or maybe overnight if you're a Prime member. Next up, if you've ever wanted to make a video game but do not know a lick about programming, well, you can now prompt a game. 
Rosebud is a new AI platform that will allow you to build, customize, and share your games on an AI-driven platform. It is in beta, I don't have access yet, but a link to the waitlist is down below. But overall, I'm definitely interested in checking out. It has a module in which you can create uh, game assets, which you can actually demo very quickly. I think this was the RPG model with the prompt Demon Slayer, and it came up with, you know, two fairly decent sprite characters. On platform, you can then animate your sprites and apparently go as far as to create AI-powered NPCs as well. Now, I am curious to check out the platform, namely because I'm not entirely sure, but the imagery that is used on the website might be overselling things a bit. I was able to hop into the game maker side of Rosebud, although I can't actually log in because again, on the wait list. Uh, and you can see the game templates here are a little more on the basic side. Um, Pong, Snake, um, something called Alien Invasion, Frog Runner, which is an infinite runner, um, and a 3D and 2D playground. Now again, I don't have access, nor have I seen things built with it. And just to be clear, I don't have a problem with any of those games. In fact, in my last video, I showcased how I was using ChatGPT to build a missile command clone, even though I have no idea what I'm doing in terms of programming. So while Rosebud may be saying design Epic Quest with an AI powered RPG creator, I'm kind of thinking maybe more Stardew Valley. Again, the link to join the Rosebud waitlist is down below. Quick note while we're sort of in this area, Adobe looks to be jumping into the text to 3D game. Not much to report right now as this is still in the paper phase, but the big news coming out of this model is that it will generate nerfs within five seconds from a single image. In all likelihood, I don't think we're gonna hear very much about this until like say next year's Adobe Max event, uh, but I am curious as to see how they're going to package this. Is this going to be a Firefly thing? Is this going to be a Mixamo thing? Is this gonna be like an After Effects or Illustrator thing? Let me know what you guys think below. And rounding out, we have an AI image generator that can finally create consistent characters. This is everart.ai. They are in beta right now. The link to sign up is down below. They did ask that I not show the UI as it is a work in progress, uh, it's fine. I mean, it's really bare bones. They are working on it. You're not missing anything. But the overall idea with EverArt is that you can create a model and train it with up to 50 images. Uh, I've been fairly obsessed with this idea. We had a few videos back about a lost Bruce Lee Terminator movie. So I grabbed a bunch of Bruce Lee images. I grabbed some Terminator images and I had Mid Journey generate up some backgrounds for us. And threw them all together and within about 10 minutes we had a trained model. Once your model is trained you can obviously start playing around with the prompts. Um, this one was kind of a cool one where I prompted in the style of a 70s movie poster. Here was another one that I did adding in the prompt comic book illustration in the style of Jim Lee, kind of Lee versus Lee. And perhaps my favorite was prompting for an action figure. I really want this action figure. In terms of character consistency, Ray Wong uh, at prompt underscore mastery uh, gave us this example using EverArt. And really impressively, Alan T got kind of a Who Framed Roger Rabbit vibe of an, you know, real person and an animated figure in the same AI generated image, which I don't know if you've ever tried to prompt for that, but it's practically impossible. Again, the link to the EverArt beta is down below. Well, that's it for today. I thank you for watching. My name is Tim.